Hello, this is Life Questions, and I'm Bill Harris, your host. This program strives to keep its fingers on the pulse of what's happening by soliciting your viewer questions about the many issues of life. And today, we have a unique group to take a look at those questions, as well as providing ministry opportunities. I'm joined now by Dale Ann Ross of Remnant Fel Worship, that is Remnant Worship, along with Jody Mears of Remnant Worship, we also have with us uh, Reverend Mark Bird, who is with Revive Ohio with a state outreach there. And rounding off our panel today, Dr. Josh Steinke of Steinke Family Chiropractic and Worship Anyway. I like that name, Worship Anyway. No matter what, gets Worship Anyway. Well, we're happy to have you all on the program today. Thanks for having us. And you know, I wanna, in looking over the questions that the viewers have sent, uh, sent us, I want to start with a question I think that is most pressing with a lot of people out there. This viewer writes, I can't get past my past. Uh, I made some bad mistakes. I have started going to church and hear the message that God forgives, but I can't figure out how to forgive myself. How do I get, how do I get to this point? Uh, I'm telling myself I am forgiven, but I continue to feel shame and regret. Uh, why don't you start? Shame is such a powerful thing. Um, shame is, in fact, we sing a song, you know, uh, that has a line and it says, shame is a prison, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the song ain't no grave. And um, the reality is that shame certainly can be a prison. We think because of the mistakes that we made uh, at some point, that becomes our reality. It's so hard to get over those things uh, that um, we can forgive other people more easily than ourselves because of that prison that we stay in and shame. And so not that I know of specific research necessarily that shows that it's just the reality that a lot of us live, you know, and um, and so overcoming that certainly is a huge obstacle. Mm -hmm. It is. What would you say? Uh, uh Jody? Well, um, he forgives our transgressions and they, they're as far from the east to the west. Mm -hmm. And so there's a song that a friend of mine wrote that said, if he has forgotten, why must I remember? Mm -hmm. And I love that because I feel like it just really just in one phrase solidifies, if he's yeah. forgotten about it, why are we remembering yes. it? And, and if he has thrown our our sins as we are forgiven into for as far as the east is from the yes, west, yes. then I feel like we, you know, and it really kind of, that's what Jesus died for. Mm -hmm. He died to forgive us of our sins and he died. And he, so if he's done that, then I don't want him to die in vain. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's hard, it's difficult as, as Dr. Josh was saying that sometimes it's hard for us to let go of our own transgressions and our own things. But I've walked through that personally. I mean, it can be a process. That's not something that always happens over Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. oh, um, yeah. But um, as you're just, you know, as you're just continuing to stare in the face of Jesus and know what he did for you, that's powerful. I think that just in and of itself is powerful to know that that's what he died for. Dale, you want to chime in? Yeah, um, I personally walked through this for years and, you know, we know the scripture that it says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But that's only true if we buy into the truth. Mm we have a job as well. Jesus already paid for it. Mm -hmm. And he says, there's no condemnation, but we have to, the, in Proverbs 23, 23, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. And so when we buy into that truth, that God's word is infallible, it is truth, and we make up our mind, then there's a transaction that can take place. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a part to play mm -hmm. in our own deliverance, right? And it also says that the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He is always accusing God's children of things and he mm -hmm. loves to use our past to do it. And so the Bible also says if we submit ourselves to God, so how do we do that? By what does the word of God say about me? Mm -hmm. What was the example of Jesus on the cross that the people that literally spent on him and, and, and just did all the horrible things they did to Jesus, he still said out of his mouth to those people, mm -hmm. They were probably worse than some of the things maybe this person was struggling with. I mean, Jesus himself, they persecuted and he still said, 
forgive them for they know not what they do. And so I believe that it's not only knowing, but letting it be a revelation to you of what Jesus did and meditating on what Jesus mm -hmm. did and that forgiveness yes. and receiving it and yes. not selling that truth, holding on to that truth. When the accuser comes to say, I know what you did. I know what your past looks like. You say, no, I'm submitting my mind. I'm submitting my heart. I'm submitting my all to Christ Jesus and what he did for me on the cross. And I am not listening to you. And it says, if you resist, mm -hmm. he Amen. will flee. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, uh, Bird, go right ahead. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, let us, therefore, we also who are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. I think the very first part in this is when we're struggling with these things, and we'll see as we unpack this for just a second, the important part is to surround yourself with people who will speak about your future not that we have to ignore our past, mm -hmm. but that we have to know that our eyes are pointed in the right direction. Here's what it says. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin mm -hmm. which so Jesus. easily ensnares us. Now this is written to the church. This is written to save people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And he says that snare, that sin is a snare mm -hmm. and it will try to trap us. Mm -hmm. But let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And here's the key, verse two, looking unto Jesus. You girl said this. Mm -hmm. He's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. what it has to be. The, the, the past will haunt you if you keep looking in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. But if we keep looking to the author and the finisher of our faith, yeah. he will help us overcome that sin which tries to continually yeah. ensnare us. Yes. Amen, amen. So yeah. You know, a companion uh, question here, we've got into this, I think uh, it says here, several people have been open and honest about their testimonies. Uh, when you think of the past and the present, how is life different with Jesus as the center of your life? How do you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I think Somebody it boils down to hope. Yeah. Yeah. Without Christ, there is absolutely no hope. People are just trying to survive, literally. Yeah. As I run into people constantly, continually, uh, and the people that are without hope, the Bible says that hope deferred or hope put off makes a heart sick. And so <laughs> I see a lot of sick people because there no, there's no hope. But the very first thing that Jesus brought to my life, and when I made him the center of my life, he brought me hope. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. yeah. I think for me, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day in my office uh, because there were so many things in life that uh, every human being really wants. Uh, and, and they're like these things like security and peace and, uh, you know, comfort and, and all these things that we seek and strive for, uh, especially like in the American way, right? We, we want financial security and we want, you know, you know, all these different assurances that, you know, we, we put away money and we, and we build up these things that unfortunately are very fleeting in life, mm -hmm. but we try to fill all of those, we try to accomplish all of those things by all these worldly things. And so life before Jesus was all that, right? And not always those, you know, like sometimes it was just, I just want to, I want, I want joy and happiness and, and I want, uh, you know, a good time and all the things that we try to do to fill those holes, those God sized holes in those areas, which can only really be uh, filled by Jesus, right? Yeah. Uh, the peace that surpasses our understanding, right? Our hope, the, uh, the security and the protection and the provision that only comes from God. We try to fill it with all these other things. So life before that was just a, a constant race of fleeting things mm -hmm. to yeah. try to fill that, right? And mm -hmm. in every area. And so many people are there. And then that leaves us actually with the opposite of all those things. Right. Yeah. right. Either now or later, we find out we actually have no security and we have, because things in an instant can change, right? Yeah. In mm -hmm. Florida right now, yeah. right? With a hurricane, like all that we thought we had that was secure and safe is gone in an instant. Uh, our peace tends to be up, you know, just overturned in an, in an instant if it's not founded in the things that are actually everlasting. And that's only found in Jesus. Yeah. Jody, right after we finish this program, you are leaving for Fort Myers, Florida. Yes. You know, yeah. the, the, the very center of what has really gone wrong down there with that hurricane. Yeah. What, what in, in the context of what we're talking about, what are you going to say to offer hope to those people? Um, you know, I, I feel like it's so important to um, not only be the hands and feet of Jesus, but really show people love 
in a time like this, the way Jesus would love them. Um, I feel like it's impactful. Treat them like family. Mm -hmm. um, treat them as if I would, as if it was someone sitting at this table that had the same impact on their life is to go yes. down there. And that comes pretty easy for me because I came from a big family and we do that pretty easily. But not everybody gets that experience. Mm -hmm. um, there are people down there alone, frightened, scared. They've lost everything. They don't know where to turn. And um, I believe this is one of the greatest opportunities to show people what Jesus would do in that instance. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, pray with them, of course, and lead them to Christ if that's their desire. But I think it's just being a living, walking example of what he would do in the midst of that. And I'm looking forward to supernaturally him, um, you know, meeting the needs of people, whether it's healing or whether it's just a piece of bread <laughs> that he knows and he hears their call. Someone had sent me a video prayer um, earlier today, praying over me before we left. And he said, he said, you are being an answer to people who have called upon the Lord, whether they've done it for the first time or whether they've repeatedly mm -hmm. done it. Um, he's hearing their hearts cry and you're being that answer. So I just feel like the Lord's hearing people's cries and it's just a great opportunity to answer that in human flesh, but also with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us to go yeah. answer the call. Yeah, excellent. Now, you, you're not going, but still you can minister to people in, in your own area and within your circle of influence. Absolutely. What, what, what do you have to say? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I can't go. I have a child and family at home, but um, I, I do believe that um, as a church, there's so much more we can be doing, right? Yes. It says, love your neighbor. You know, I just moved in February. You can go bake them a pie. <laughs> you can go and, and you know, I'm more of um, in my home. It's like, oh, I want that to be my sanctuary. But God recently has really been pricking my heart for my neighbors right next door. OK, so I think sometimes we think of a big stage or we think of these big exploits that we want to do for Jesus. And that's great. But why don't you go knock on your neighbor's door? and say, what do you need? Are you in need of anything? Because right now everyone's hurting. Inflation is at an all time high. There may be people that don't have yeah. groceries. Yeah. And um, I even recently started a garden and I, I've been just handing out vegetables to everybody I know, you know, cause it's, it's very simple. The gospel is simple. Yes. Doing things for people is very simple. We as humans make it difficult, but I believe that we, um, we have a testimony to give. We all have a past of what Jesus has done for us and we can share that. But I think when we build relationship first, then it opens the door to that yeah. and it opens the door to conversation for Jesus. Excellent. You're right on time. It's time for a break. We're coming okay. back with more questions. So don't you dare go away. Perhaps your question will be answered in this next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we've got some great questions to, to continue on with. Look at this. One viewer writes, uh, you all are very involved in music. How is music such an important part of one's faith? How about that? I love music. I've, I've been playing guitar since I was 13. Wow. Yeah, love music, love music. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Go right ahead. Yeah, um, it's, it's huge. Um, we were just talking earlier that um, in heaven, music is a big deal. Yes, it <laughs> I mean, is. You, you, it's talked about in the book of Revelation. It's talked about in the Old Testament. It's talked about in the New Testament. And one of the scriptures that I love so much is in Colossians 3 and 16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Yes. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God for the Father, Amen. or for God the Father through him. Mm. And um, yeah, it's, it's huge. And I was actually looking this up today. This is really cool. Some highlights of the importance of music in the New Testament was, uh, the New Testament quotes the book of Psalms more than any other book in the Old Testament. The New Testament speaks of Christ singing when he was on the earth of his singing um, someday in the future. The New Testament teaches that believers are commanded to be filled with the Spirit. This one I love so much. <laughs> and the first listed result of that filling of the Holy Spirit is believers ministering psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to one another. Such believers sing and make melody in their hearts.
hearts to the Lord. And I just love that. It's, it's actually a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit when mm -hmm. you are able to sing unto the Lord. And I think the importance of it is not to be placed on worship leaders or people that actually have a gift in music. We all are to be singing praises and giving thanks and gratitude to, to the yes. Lord through song. It yeah. doesn't matter if it may not be a joyful noise to your neighbor. It really is a <laughs> joyful noise unto the Lord. And I promise you, I believe that heaven has an auto tuner. So just sing and give shouts. And you know, even our shirt that we're wearing today that it says louder than hell. And Jody could probably tell this story. It literally, Judah went first, and as they began to sing loud and strong, mm -hmm. listen to what happened. The enemy began to turn on themselves, and mm -hmm. the enemy was defeated. Mm -hmm. It's also a weapon. Our yes. songs are a weapon to yes. the enemy and to darkness. It does damage to hell, and that's what I love Hallelujah. the most of how powerful music is. Excellent. So, Very well yeah. said. Yeah. Jody? Yeah, that's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, actually, um, is in Second Chronicles 20, 22, where King Jehoshaphat fell to his face and he prayed and he asked the Lord. And the prophet said, this battle is the Lord's. You won't have to fight, which just seems just incredible. Mm -hmm. And they were they were outnumbered and he fell to his face. And then he he after praying and just seeking the Lord, he put Judah in front. And as they were worshiping over and they came over the hill, the enemy had turned on themselves and it took them three days yeah. to recover all the loot yeah. from the enemy. Yeah. And um, yeah. every single one of them had turned on each other. So I just, you know, I back what she says. For me, it's just been a powerful weapon in some really dark times in my life. I went and I just praised and I just worshiped with everything that I have, even with tears down my face and um it's just been a powerful weapon for me over the years. And I think of Lucifer, who when he was in heaven, he was the angel of music yes, and was. it worship and music actually came through mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now we've been given the greatest honor um, to for worship to come through us. That's probably why he hates us so mm -hmm. much, you know, because now we're the vessel that go. the Lord uses yeah. to, to um, you know, expel his glory and we can use worship to do that. So I think it's powerful. Excellent. Doctor, you want to go next? Yeah, I was just talking about how uh, not only is music important for one's faith, uh, but also f just looking at some Harvard research on why it's so important for our health, right, and our brain. And there was uh, some research done in 2020 I was just reading. It's called Why is Music Important for the Brain? And it talks about how uh, when we listen to music, all areas of the brain are activated and how people who listen to music, especially at a young age, who are exposed to music at a, uh, regularly, uh, can remember better, recall cognitively better, but it, our cognitive and emotional well-being are actually improved when music is involved, right? People with Alzheimer's and dementia, we know that they, that's a therapy that we use for them because of how much it affects the brain and mm -hmm. it activates areas of the brain that have been dying and uh, how people with Alzheimer's and dementia that forget everything else in life can remember songs from when they were kids, right? Yes. Especially songs like from the hymnals and things, right? And those kids' songs. So how important is it? how important is music to our health. But I think that the connection between that and faith is it's how we are created, yeah. right? God has created us for worship, yeah. right? We know that we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We know that, that music throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and in prophecies of what's to come in heaven, right? What we're gonna be doing for eternity, right? Uh, that it's so important. And, but, but you know, personally for my, my walk with Jesus, my faith, it was worship and worship nights and music that changed my complete perspective. <laughs> Seeing people worship and passionate worship and like what seemed to be more real than anything I'd ever experienced in a church, in the four walls of a church, watching people worship and, and actually look like they were, like something was happening to them physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and I couldn't deny what was going on. It made me start to question, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't know what what this walk with Jesus was about these people look like they're passionate and it's actually what turned me on to number one Jesus but also to worship at a very early early in my walk with God so mm -hmm. personally my why I'm so passionate about worship and why we we want people to like, like I said it doesn't matter if they can sing or not like we were created to do that <laughs> uh, and it doesn't like the Harvard study didn't say uh, when, when people could sing well their brain was, <laughs> was healthier. No, it, it just was a joyful noise. Right? Yes. It was music, uh, and it's such a a big part of how we're made. All right, uh, go go right ahead, my brother. What would you have to say about uh, music? this? Is personal. Um, and music is a part of my life, but I can tell you that there have been times and seasons because I've been a Christian for a long, long time. And there have been times and seasons where I haven't had a song to sing in my heart, mm. uh, quite honestly. Yeah. And my wife will tell you because she's been with me the whole time. 
uh, those are no those years are no fun. Those times, those seasons are no fun when the song's in your heart. But I'm also taken to the Psalm where David cries out and he says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Yes. And if you think about that, you read that, he's commanding his soul to yeah. bless the Lord. Yeah. Why? Wow. Because he knows that he will be delivered yeah. in that time. And I can tell you this, I love to pray, Bill. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'll pray at the drop of a hat, mm -hmm. but nothing can express my heart to my Savior like a song. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you know, true. pray, mm -hmm. prayer and words are great, but if I can sing them, then my soul sings and my yeah. soul is lifted up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my heart. Yeah, music is, it's, 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 it's direct ministry. It's it just really direct is, yeah. ministry, you know, and uh, I've just seen people's lives just change right there in yes. church mm -hmm. because of a simple song. Mm -hmm. And no matter what yeah. the background, what, what the suffering and the past may have been, one simple song can just change all of that yeah. when it's sung under the anointing. You know? And Bill, I can say this too. There's one word that's translated the same in every single language. And that's the word hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> and when that word is sung, I've been in international settings yeah. before where that song comes out and it mm. doesn't matter if you don't know the rest of the words mm. or understand right. that. When hallelujah comes out, it's the same Amen. and the volume increases and going. the power of God shows up. Amen. Hallelujah. So I heard somebody say the other day, God will show up and show out. Yeah, yeah that's it. That is it. Well, great. Let's turn the conversation to something else. And that is... The Bible teaches us that there are seasons in our lives and we need to recognize those. And I know each one of you is, has, has had experience along these lines. You were talking with me about this before airtime. What about knowing the seasons and the changes in your life and when to change? And sometimes when change is presenting itself, it may come at a time when you think, no, we need to stay the course here. But no, and God is in fact pulling you away. You, you want to start with that? Sister? Sure. Yeah, uh, that happened to us personally in our ministry. I mean, it's happened all throughout our lives, but mm -hmm. specifically in our ministry, we were doing downtown um, Lima um, ministry, worshiping down there and, and doing all kinds of ministry down there. And as it was growing and <laughs> just flourishing and people's lives would be changing, God said, take three months off and rest and hand the ministry over to somebody else. And it was like, screech <laughs> like, um it and we both heard it because her and i be in ministry together the mm -hmm. good thing about it is because we both have the holy spirit he mm -hmm. always confirms his word sure. and we have each other to kind of bounce things off of and say am i hearing god right yeah. you know and honestly it was hard it was hard to uh downshift mm -hmm. it was hard for us to come into a season of rest but i believe it was for multiple purposes um, obviously when God asks you to do something, there's so many facets as to why he's asking you to switch gears. Mm -hmm. And, um, in the three months of rest, uh, we didn't see that we were struggling with that because, uh, downtown was like our baby sure. and, sure. um, we were loving what we were doing and we were enjoying what we were doing. But now hindsight is 2020. <laughs> we see what God was doing. He was not only doing an inner healing in us and allowing us to let our bodies catch up with the the production and the work that we were doing mm -hmm. down there um there was it, it was also he was shifting territories for us as well i believe he was opening doors for opportunities for others uh, to mm -hmm. be the church sure. um and we didn't want to stand in the way of other people's growth as well mm -hmm. so sometimes you got to move out of the way so that other people can step in right because it's not about us yeah. it's about the work of the kingdom of god moving and advancing so the reason why God asks us to shift and do things, um, we may not always know at first, but he has reasons. But I say this, the Holy Spirit is the one. Yes. You may not always read it in, right in the scripture, mm -hmm. but when you have that unction from the Holy Spirit to say, mm -hmm. move, you better move with the, cr with the yes. cloud. And um, because there is a huge reason behind it and it's always good. It's Amen. always a good reason. Amen. Jody? Yeah, I would just, you know, piggybacking off what she said, um, I just want to move when he moves and I want to go where he goes. And I really do feel like um, it also was to take people's eyes off of one particular set of people um, because we can kind of fall into that. You know, you become like an image and in, in, it, it kind of gets set. And I think God did that kind of another facet of it was to take people's eyes off of what's well, always been you two. 
and it's always been them. And so, and when, and we've never wanted to be in that position. We came from that, you know, back in BC before Christ, it was all about us. <laughs> and now we want nothing of us mm -hmm. and we want it all to be about Jesus. And so when it, I feel like he did that strategically as well, to take the eyes off us and put it back on him mm -hmm. and what he wants to do. Yeah. Gentlemen, what say you? I know Mark just pulled up this verse too. And you know, it's the one that we think about in seasons is Ecclesiastes 3, right? And uh, that the one thing that sticks out to me the most, uh, you know, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And then he goes on, a time to be born, a time to die, a time for a, to mourn and dance and all these different things. So there's a time for everything. And one of the things I think about is there's a, for, the reason for this is that there's a purpose, right? To every, yeah. a time for every purpose under mm -hmm. heaven, right? Mm -hmm. But the purpose is always God's, not mine. Right? Right. And yeah. so if I make the timing my timing, right? God has a timing. And I can know that, but if I make it my timing then, or I try to force when, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's not the right, you know, because it's going really well, right? And, and so uh, those seasons are so important to understand, and we always love the seasons where things are really flourishing, right? Yeah. Like the harvest season where we're getting all the fruit, but every other season is just as important to prepare Absolutely. for the next harvest. And so yeah. uh, moving when God says move and, yeah. uh, you know, understanding that the purpose is always still his and if i try to move outside of that then it becomes my purpose right. and i mess it all up Amen. we've got less than 90 seconds you think okay you can... i gotta go fast right <laughs> so my thing is this uh, the bible says submit yourselves unto god and if you're really submitted unto god you will go through different seasons because he wants us to grow and we could go on and quote 30 more scriptures about dying and growing in Christ. But if you're not willing to die, then you're not willing to grow. And mm -hmm. that's a hard pill to swallow because the Lord has shifted me through many seasons of my life and said, okay. And as soon as I got comfortable, the Lord yeah. goes, it's time to shift, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I don't like any of them, Bill. <laughs> and I don't want to submit, but, but I want to grow. Yeah, I want to be yeah. who he has called and asked me to be. Yeah. And he deserves every square inch of me, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how he works. So if you're not, if you're staying still, you're stagnant, you're not growing. All right. Well said, and uh, that'll put the top on it all. We appreciate you. <laughs> this has been terrific. I enjoy your being with us today, and certainly you've been able to minister to a lot of people. Appreciate you. Well, this fine panel that you're enjoying right now is going to be back with us again next week, so make sure you tune in again next week. Okay, we'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.